When I close my eyes, I remember the big tree I used to climb in my grandmother's backyard. I remember all the fun I used to have, the freedom. I was a monkey. I was a space explorer on a foreign planet. I was a superhero, a search and rescue robot. I was a vine monster, a crashing airplane, a dancer and a scientist. I was a kid. I was happy in that tree. What am I now? autonomy you know, of independence of freedom you know like of like uh, running away from civilization you know like it sounds romantic but yet that that's the kind of, that's the direction I wanted to go in you know so like we moved out here and we had no money and we did everything ourselves like we were <laughs> we were recycling nails we were straightening bent nails to build things with because we had no money but that turned out to be a a really good way because poverty is an incredible teacher if you have nothing then you're forced to do for yourself so like that's what we've been doing all along and then we started attracting more people and like it just eventually led to where we are now i don't think running away running away running towards something running towards something that feels really good and something that feels right if i were to leave here i'd be running away from something but when I left the city, I wasn't running away from anything. I was just coming closer to where I want to be. If I found it too oppressive, you know, too stifling, too much regulation and too much uh, conformity and everything just so, you know. And I, and I, I couldn't, at the time, I couldn't really, I couldn't um, verbalize, like, what exactly was wrong with it. But I had this strong sense, you know. And so, like, but I, I guess I always had a bit of a rebellious streak in me, you know. And because, um, like... I felt stifled. The basic idea of the Sun Farm was to try and create a place where people can live that is not as destructive on the planet as the mainstream industrial society. They were sort of uh, flower children of the 70s that were afraid of the Cold War and nuclear annihilation of the planet. So that's what some people's original uh, motivation for coming out here was that, but now it's it's a lot more. So we wanted to try and grow uh, some of our own food and create our own shelter, uh, get away from going to work all the time, and just try and have a more simplistic lifestyle using less resources and recycling stuff too. 
I mean, I'd have to point out that uh, Northern Sun Farm can only be doing what we're doing now because we live beside such a wasteful industrial society that's continually throwing away resources. You know, it really takes very little to, to get along and to be happy. You know, you, all people need is water, food, air, shelter, warmth, and company. And we have all that here. You lie down in my soft, sexy bed While I butcher this deer Cause you see it's good for my head You see this is one of my dreams Cause I feel very strongly Strange what actions give birth to yeah. I never thought Well, I like circles better than squares, always have. The squares seem so dead, you know, like circles seem like more alive. I never found love would grow from this until I found the afterglow. I chose to come to the Sun Farm because I always had a dream of living in, in wilderness, in a rural environment. When I was a kid, I had dreams of running off into the woods and living on my own. Um, but I've since learned that I'm much more connected to people than maybe I thought I was when I was a kid. So I really, I find that the Sun Farm is a really good balance of community and living in a rural environment. So, to live in nature, but to not have the isolation that goes with nature, being in nature alone. I also feel that the Sun Farm, there's quite a bit of freedom here, creative freedom, and that's very important to me, to, to have that space and that environment to, to build, to create. We live a simpler life where we haul wood, we haul water. If the, it's raining and the sun isn't out, then we don't get solar power. But usually, even if it's not sunny, it's windy, and then we might get the, the wind power. So I like living closer to nature. It, it makes me feel less ashamed of being a human being, and it makes me feel less like a parasite on the earth. But we realized that, like, in order for this to work, we would have to, like, start a community, you know, because we... <clears throat> That's one of the first decisions we made right off the bat was we, we're not going to get hydro. When uh, I was in grade school, I actually was um, taken up to the Gillum Hydroelectric Project and seen the blasting when they were first putting the dams in there. And I had such a visceral response. And then I was billeted with a native family that were going to have to be moved again. And I really learned about how the hydroelectricity uh, generation in Manitoba has come at the cost of moving a lot of indigenous peoples and the tremendous uh, social, spiritual, physical, emotional impact that's had on them. And so I wanted to live more simply in a way that didn't give Manitoba Hydro any of my money. And so knowing Gerhardt and living here at Northern Sun where we use wind power and solar power, we don't have any hydroelectricity, has really um, been part of my wanting to stand with Indigenous people and their their ability to survive the genocidal activities that have been perpetuated against them for so long. So for me it, it is live simply so that others may simply live because certain people are marginalized in this culture and treated really badly and I don't want to be part of that. I don't want to live from slavery whether it be from people or animals. Get to know yourself and to get to know the people you're living with I think is what living in community is like any kind of issues or disagreements that come up or similarities and things that you're inspired by that come up you really see them full force 
Like you can't deny a problem you have with someone and if you try to pretend it's not there and just forget about it, it's gonna be there the next time you see them or like to actually try to work together and grow together instead of just if you have a disagreement with your neighbor, closing the door and not seeing them maybe for a couple weeks or whatever. It's like connecting on a deeper human level and yeah, sharing and learning with each other. I was really intrigued by this place and everything just seemed to fit. Like it just, it made sense what was going on out here. It just felt more of a connection to nature than I ever had before. And I had grown up on a farm as a kid in rural Saskatchewan, but it, it's almost like people who have come into the eco-village movement have been awakened to a certain degree that what's going on in the greater world isn't the most ideal and they've seen something you know like they've seen that there is another way to live Spirituality, to a large degree, is being able to feel yourself, get in touch with uh, your feeling. And that, <clears throat> that physical feeling not only benefits or affects you physically, but, you know, in your other dynamics, your emotions, your mind, and your spirituality. And it's all tied together, and what affects one affects the other. My son was seven months old when I absolutely knew that I, I couldn't raise him in a, in a largely populated environment. And I really believe that for development, that human beings need to be able, you know, at a very young age, they need to be able to crawl around in nature and to touch things and to taste them and to become connected with the soil and the earth. And it's almost like if you don't gain respect for the mother earth then it's almost impossible to have respect for people or all of the earth's creations and i came here and i fell in love with this place and within months i knew that i belonged here and that it was it was right it was right for raising children and it was right for my development too so I was originally only going to stay a day, and uh, I'm still here four years later. So uh, I found the space to be creative. Being able to provide a lot of the fundamental necessities yourself gives you the freedom to not have to work for money in order to pay for those things. Well, the more friends you have, the less money you need, and the more you can do together the less you need to steal. And by stealing, I mean acquiring materials with money that, that was created through slavery, ignorance, and destruction of, of the earth that we live on. I feel like lessons come when you're not 
really expecting them or trying to understand them. It's just like kind of a wave that washes over you of, oh, okay, that makes sense. Or, I mean, there's been times where I've spent hours trying to like hash something out, talking with someone, and it's, I mean, it's not always just like, oh, it's bliss, I'm here, and I just understand all these things. You have to be open still and looking for it. Like, I can't just lie here on this couch and, like, okay, information, come to me. Like, I'm going to learn from everyone here. And by doing things, like, I learn about electricity and about solar electricity from trying to set up a solar system. The food systems work differently for different people, but for myself personally, the way it works is every winter I start to think about what do we need to get through another year. Protein is extremely important to us because we live in the winter in a very cold environment. We're extremely physically active. We're still going into the bush and cutting firewood by hand. Not everybody is here, but I am personally, my family is. Uh, protein is huge and um, it takes time to actually produce protein. So the animals are really important. We, uh, we raise our own meat and we butcher our own meat and we process our own meat, so all of that's done right here. And that means, you know, meat's a huge dietary need. Uh, we grow dry beans too for protein. And there are some things we can't produce, but we do produce enough potatoes, enough tomatoes, enough dry beans, enough green beans, enough brassica, enough garlic, enough onions <laughs> to keep us going for an entire year. We buy in bulk, organically, those things which we can't produce. So food production, wow, you know, starting seeds in the, in the house, saving seed, which is so incredibly important, knowing where your seed's coming from, knowing that it doesn't have any chemical uh, product put on it. Yeah, ground up, right? Ground up. No rotor tillers, <laughs> just the old, the old, you know, saw the old fork and spade and um, a complete circle, a complete circle start to finish. You save your own seed, you plant your own seed, you harvest your own plants, you deal with the product that you get off your plants for storage in terms of canning, drying or fermenting and then you eat the food over the winter, the waste that comes off the food in terms of of our human manure, our animal, animal manure, gets all saved and goes back into the garden. So a nice clean cycle. We eat the food from our gardens and put it into, uh, into our worm bins and it goes back into our, our gardens again. We deal with our own human manure in, uh, in a very user-friendly way. We don't have septic systems, we compost it all. And this is the most sustainable waste management system on the planet as far as I know. It's simple, there's no plumbing, there's no running water necessary. You just make your deposit in the bucket. It's pretty fancy. Anyways, it just opens up and then you take your pail and dump it in the worm bin essentially. Like so. Which is probably some of the best organic food. Or, uh, organic fertilizer. It's amazing. It's some of the best you can find in the world. <laughs> and it's your own poo. So how about that? You eat the food and you poo it out and then it goes back into the food you grow. That's what sustainable is, right? It's just amazing the way that the worms, they convert what's basically deemed garbage into the most beautiful stuff imaginable. I mean, I don't know. It seems like uh, it's the whole turnaround in agriculture from waste to new input. That's what we need to do in agriculture. In rural areas, they have septic systems that are constantly problematic and, and can be very poisonous and cost tons and tons of money and tons and tons of infrastructure. This fundamental change could, could save bajillions of dollars. <laughs>especially that was very important for me to develop my awe for the environment around me. It focused my vision instead of expanded it. And ever since I quit watching television, I, I see much, much more. Every day I see more. 
like I'm a very reflective person and to have the space and the time to do that is really important to me and to be able to be in the woods if I want to whenever like just walk out the door and be in the woods instead of be in the city and have to plan this big escape <laughs> to get out into nature where I can actually connect. I have an interest in herbs and in healing and that was the other kind of big difference I noticed in myself since living in the city is because I was I want to heal I want to heal I want to fix this I want to oh and like just neurotic and I feel out here it's just it just is you know there that drive for healing or that drive for peace it just you don't have to look for it it just is there's so many different sides to it and we're not really an intuitive culture in North America we're consumer capitalist dead like not dead but <laughs> we're alive but there's not very much spirit um. society has changed society needs to change back and it's not just because people are chemically sensitive or environmentally ill or they have Alzheimer's or MS or all of the inflammatory diseases are growing the world has to change our youth. I believe the figure is 35% of Americans are now obese. 25% of Canadians are now obese. It wasn't like that five years ago, 10 years ago, or 15 years ago. Our society has to recapture some values of hard work. I've noticed nobody obese on Northern Sun. It would be really good if we could dismantle civilization. Yeah, it would be excellent. There would be a lot of crisis that would, uh, that would follow, but the, the end result, I think, would be worth it. But that change is already happening. And if anyone has any qualms about anything that goes on in modern society, then it's people's responsibility to take up the fight and make change for themselves. And it's any number of things from food, food production to raising your kids and socializing with other human beings. So that's why I think that being out here is important because these people have taken it upon themselves to be autonomous and to do things the right way. sick and tired of being confronted at every step of the way by rules and regulations. And, and it's turned out here that this is what we can do here. Nobody tells us what to do. And I don't know how long this will last, but this is freedom. You know, like we have no bosses. Nobody tells us what to do. We have everything we need. We live in a beautiful environment. It's paradise. Henry David Thoreau once wrote, As a single footstep will not make a path on the earth, so a single thought will not make a pathway in the mind. To make a deep physical path, we walk again and again. To make a deep mental path, we must think over and over the kind of thoughts we wish to dominate our lives. Inspired by this idea, we move towards other life. We do not escape society. We embrace the new idea of how society should be.